Hey guys, Nurse Mike here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Before we get today's lecture started, please remember, click here to check out our brand new app-based NCLEX product, loaded with the highest quality NCLEX style practice questions and complete with detailed video rationales that break down the question for you. So finally master all those darn select all that apply questions. Plus, all our NCLEX memberships come included with our entire library of over a thousand videos and study guides and cheat sheets. Come see why over a hundred thousand students have trusted their future to simplenursing.com. Click here to get started for free. Now our last cancer treatment is technically not a drug, but still a treatment. We have radiation and brachytherapy. Typically radiation is given outside the body with big, huge x-ray looking machines and usually used in combination with chemotherapy to help shrink down those cancerous tumors before they're taken out with surgery. Now, as you can see, this type of radiation is given outside the body and can be very harsh on the skin, making it red, dry, and itchy, not to mention very sensitive. So we do not use anything that will cause skin irritation. So no lotions, creams, perfumes, powders, or even makeup cosmetics definitely no tape or deodorants, and definitely not shaving. So just remember, be soothing to the skin and not harsh. Now, ATI mentions this, giving a client with cancer undergoing radiation therapy, stating, I will use my hands rather than a washcloth to clean the radiation area. So yes, never harsh on the skin. We're using the hands instead of that washcloth. Now, switching gears to brachytherapy, which is a different type of radiation in that it goes inside the body, which makes it very dangerous. So, a radioactive implant is placed directly inside the tumor for about 24 to 72 hours, making this patient like a radioactive hazard. So, typically it's used with two most common types of cancer, mentioned by multiple question banks. So, write these down endometrial cancer, and cervical cancer. Those are the two to know. Now, the nursing interventions, this is where all the test questions come from. So remember, radiation is really bad since it's super toxic to the patient and anyone in close contact. So on the NCLEX, the number one goal here is safety. So anyone with an implanted radiation, keyword, it's really bad. We need to limit time, distance, and we need to shield the body. So the big key points to write down for time here. We need a cluster care 30 minutes per shift. So typically we rotate the staff. And staff is to wear a radiation film badge called a dosimeter, a small little device that monitors the radiation exposure. Now for distance, we teach all visitors to be at least six feet away. No pregnant company, basically any pregnant family members or anyone coming to visit, and no one less than 18 years old, and a private room and private toilet. Next, we always close the door to the room at all times, and we place a sign on the door that says, Caution, Radioactive. Now, lastly, shielding. We always use this key term here, a lead apron, when in direct contact with the patient. So watch those key words there only during direct contact or direct patient care. Now, lastly, a nice to know. We teach patients not to get up if they have the implant inside the cervical area, since the implant can fall out. So we teach patients not to touch. So no touchy, the radiation-y. Always use a long-handled object and place inside a lead container. So guys, big risk for toxicity. So just think again, Radiation is really bad. Now for the top two missed questions for cancer pharmacology. Question number one, when preparing to administer tamoxifen to a patient with breast cancer, the nurse is most concerned by which patient reports. So this question is asking for the most concerning, for the key problem, administering tamoxifen. So typically when you hear the word most concerning, just think who dies first? Or what's the worst case scenario? And we're always thinking ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation. Okay, so before looking at the options, 
Think of the two things you know about tamoxifen. So the double E's, E for emboli risk, which means a clot risk, and E for endometrial cancer. We report heavy bleeding, two big circulation issues for our ABCs. Option number one, I have been experiencing really heavy menstrual cycles recently. So we have to choose this as correct. Guys, even if you don't know what this medication does, this technically says heavy menstrual cycles. So we just think ABCs. In this case, circulation means bleeding. Now option two, my hot flashes seem to be decreasing in frequency. So this is incorrect. Decreasing hot flashes is actually a good thing. And by the way, hot flashes are to be expected with tamoxifen, since we call it temihoxifen, basically hot. Now the last two options are also incorrect. So I feel like I may be developing a sinus infection, so no, sinus infections are not the top priority here. And lastly, I just don't have energy for sex the way I used to. So no, sex is not a top priority. Well, at least not in this case. Now, question number two. The nurse is caring for a client with ovarian cancer taking doxyrubicin. Which assessment finding should the nurse report to the healthcare provider? Select all that apply. So this question is asking for a priority finding. Which assessment finding should the nurse report for the key problem taking doxorubicin? So before looking at the options, a little side note here. All priority questions. Guys, always think, what kills the patient first? So remember, let the question help you. When you see words like assessment findings to report or most concerning or even first action by the nurse, this always indicates a worst case scenario. Basically, a priority question. Always ask yourself, what kills this patient first? Now, in this case, doxorubicin, even if you don't know, just let the name help you here. The question states that the client has cancer, and the worst case scenario is a chemo drug that kills all the blood cells in the body. So, we have low blood cells. So, just think low RBCs, we have anemia. Low WBCs, we have infection and fevers over 100.3, and we have low platelets, big bleed risk. That's technically what kills first. So looking at our options. Option one is incorrect. Partial thrombin tine of 55. Technically, PTT is normal between 46 and 70. And it's not technically a cell, it's a coagulation factor, typically not affected by chemo. But this is a good try. Now, I can see if you were thinking platelets, which is option number two. Platelet count of 48. Yes, we have to choose this as correct. Huge risk for bleeding. So remember, platelets less than 50 is very risky. Big bleed risk, because normally it's 150 to 400,000. Now, option three, red blood cell count of 5 million. This is normal since 4.5 to 6 is the correct range for RBCs. Now, the last two options are both correct. A temperature of 100.7 or 38.2 Celsius. Yes, this is a fever. So remember the key numbers here. 100.3 indicates a fever with any cancer patient. Now, lastly, option number five, white blood cells at 3,600. So yes, this is less than 4,000, so it's critical for chemo patients. Normally, to 10,000 for the NCLEX is normal. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this segment. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.